Okay, so today we'll talk a little bit about groups. So the groups is a mathematical concept, and what it means is it's a collection of any of, of some sort of elements, a group of elements, and they form a group if they follow a set of mathematical rules. The reason this is important for our class is that, um, so here's our key point. For any molecule, a complete list A complete list of its symmetry operations, symmetry operations forms a mathematical group. And we'll talk a little bit about what that means. Okay, but first we'll talk about the definitions of what a mathematical group is. So the first rule you can follow along with out is <clears throat> one product of any two elements within this group, so aka two symmetry operations, product of two elements is also an element in the group. And so what this means is, um, if you followed the last video, if you take two, a product of two symmetry operations, that's still got to be a symmetry operation for that molecule. So one of the examples that we used for ethylene oxide was that if you did a C2 followed by a sigma V, this equals sigma V prime, all three of these elements are, part, are symmetry operations that are valid for that molecule. Um, the other example I did was, for example, if you did C2 followed by C2, it's going to be E. So again, this is why actually why the identity element is so critical because Identity elements always got to be part of any of these groups. So anyway, product two elements is an element within the group. Great. Second rule for these mathematical groups is uh, one element must commute with all others and leave everything else unchanged. So what this means, basically, there is identity element. There is identity. And then that is solved because we said that um, the identity operation, E, is valid for every molecule. So with this commuting business and leaving unchanged is that if we did C2 times E equals C2, so C2 and C2 are unchanged. If we do it the other way around, if we did a C2 followed by E, this also equals C2, so it commutes. Okay, great. Rule three, there is the associative um, law. There is associative law. AKA, if you had parentheses, so if we did C followed by B and then followed that operation by A, this is going to be the same thing as if we did this. So I won't prove that um, with examples, but hopefully you can do that on your own with symmetry operations and see that it works. All right, and the last rule is that every element has a reciprocal. has reciprocal. And so what this means in mathematical terms is if we have a symmetry operation, if we follow that symmetry operation by the so-called reciprocal, which I'll just denote this, it's going to be have to be the same as the identity element. So obviously if we take a mirror plane, so let's say we take any sigma v, for let's say for ethylene oxide from the last example, if we mirror again on that, on that same sigma v, then all our atoms, even like from the, like if we label our atoms, they're going to be the same. So this is going to be equal to E. Same if we had like C2 times C2, if we rotate 100 degrees twice, that's the same as not rotating at all. That's E. Um, maybe a more exotic example is if we have a C4, for example, a molecule, let's say we had like tetrachloroplatinate, square planar. And we had, oops, sorry, that's a minus, two minus. So if we have chloride one, or A, B, C, D, if we rotate 90 degrees by C4, then our A will go over here. To get that reciprocal A all the way back, we'd have to rotate by negative 90 degrees or by 270 degrees. So that is still along the same C4 axis, but this would be C4 cubed. 
And this is our reciprocal element for C4. So C4 is rotating 90 degrees clockwise. C4-3 would be rotating 270 degrees uh, clockwise as well, or you know, the, the reverse direction. So therefore, this will equal E. So you can, for, for yourself, you can find all the symmetry elements that are reciprocal. So, but this is the case that if you have a symmetry element, uh, a symmetry operation, rather, for a molecule, you can always figure out the reciprocal to figure out to get back to the identity. So these are our four mathematical rules. And we'll show um, during class uh, that we can find a complete list and that these rules are followed for an example molecule. OK, um, and last points about a group. We have some terminology. So the group order, group order equals the number of elements. And then by elements, I mean symmetry operations for us. Um, I'll note that we have to distinguish between, for example, C4 and C4-3 are both along the C4 axis, but they count as different operations. So we count these as two different operations. And also, you know, C4 squared would be C2. That's, that's a third operation as well. So these all count within the order.